Okay, here we are getting toward the end of December of 2023. So it's time to think about how the year went and trying to gauge how well one does. And uh, so in my video series, I often mention the fact that generally accepted accounting practices uh, are a snapshot. In other words, we draw fences around things, a fiscal month, a fiscal year. Um, and a lot of that's governed by uh, taxes. Uh, you have to do an income tax return a year in. And so that sets up a, generally a calendar year, although a corporation can request and obtain a fiscal year that's not January 1st to December 31st. Uh, they can't change that nilly willy because that would <laughs> mean they'd be manipulating their uh, taxes, which is done a lot anyway. A lot of um, you'll see on the internet um, and articles and videos and whatnot about how to maximize your tax savings uh, by moves you can make a year end. And essentially what they're doing there is they're either uh, pulling forward revenue or pushing it out or pulling forward expenses or pushing it out. Uh, over the long haul, um, it should equal out in terms of taxes. Um, although I've heard a saying that's probably true is if you can avoid taxes seven years, you've avoided, avoided them all forever. I don't know. I don't try to play those kinds of games, but there's the point I'm trying to make is, is there, when you look at financial statements, that's the fence. That's, that's what's within this time range, which is fine. There's, there's need for that, but it doesn't show the viability of a business or business model. Uh, that's only done through uh, free cash flow. Throughout my website, in, uh, which are the links are listed down below in the description, um, I go over what the formula for free cash flow. And essentially, it is the revenue generated less the uh, cost of replacing the whatever it is you sold. Um, so that's that's important. The more expanded version of that would be covering everything. Um, uh, capital expenditures and whatnot. Although replacing the inventory you're selling is a capital expense. But at any rate, the point is, is that business isn't just static thing. It's an ongoing enterprise if it's to be successful. So if you do a search on YouTube or on the internet uh, itself and look for free cash flow, you'll find all kinds of really good explanations of what that is and why that's so important. Now, the reason it's important to me is, is that I'm not an investor nor a trader, I don't trade stocks. Uh, so I don't make, I can't measure a profit on a single transaction. Um, because basically any trades that, any stock I acquire or are called away are basically res a result of the options I sell. A revenue stream that was the premiums of those um, that I received from selling those option contracts. I don't trade them. Um, the people I sell it to may trade them, 
In other words, the person that buys the options I create may hold them until expiration, um, in which case they're no good, uh, or exercise them, or trade them. So basically, uh, a little bit of money, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars, um, can result in, you know, a dollar or two profit if you're, if you're trading the options. And of course, you just have to exp extrapolate that over to a much larger volume to get the picture. I don't do that. I, I provide. Um, the contracts which themselves are tradable. And I think that people who look at what I'm doing and, and, and don't understand it don't realize that I'm not a trader. I'm creating a financial object which in itself can be traded. That's what attracts people to buy it. So but I'm, I, I let them run to expiration. I'm hoping to cover the spread. I usually do buy a few pennies. But the real um, bulk of the profits I make are based on the contracts that I sell, but which are never exercised. So therefore, I didn't have to buy nor replace anything. I just sold the option. And if it's not exercised, I keep the premium for doing nothing more than offering that, uh, covering that risk. And as far, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what's, what's my methodology? What's, what's my crystal ball, I guess? And the answer is I don't have one. The market itself is an auction. I'll, I'll post an order to sell option contracts and I choose the strike price and I choose the amount I'm asking. And people will bid um, and if they meet my ask price then we've got a deal. I got, I got the premium and they got their option. But this movement of the this tug of war, if you will, between the ask and the bids um, are based on a general consensus of the market, which is normally pretty, pretty much correct because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, if the market as a whole thinks stock price is going to go up, then the, then the uh, bid on a option will change based on how much they think that's going to go up. And because there's money behind that belief, they typically are pretty close. Um, much more so than people buying the options, hoping to be able to have the market go in their direction and then exercise the option and make some money. Um, the big advantage of being a seller, a creator and seller of the options, is that my risks are actually pretty low. If I miss my um, uh, spread, that is the difference between uh, the strikes on the put and the call, uh, it's usually about only a few pennies, uh, which does not interrupt in any material way uh, my free cash flow but it keeps me in the game so that when those contracts that I sell are not exercised it could be four or five six hundred bucks pure profit um, that goes into the mix so free cash flow is is what my whole model is based upon if you haven't already gone to my website and looked at my uh, PowerPoint presentation of uh, my business model, 
the transaction set, uh, you need to do that. that. That'll really show you how the free cash flow idea works. And I've been doing this steadily since, um, well, heavily since uh, 2010. And um, the only substantial loss I've ever taken was, as I'm prone to do, put all my eggs in one basket. And I was when the whole horizontal drilling, commonly called fracking, started, and it influenced the oil industry so much. Uh, I was heavily invested in that and took a paper loss of about $170,000. Now, my actual loss wasn't uh, that bad, uh, about, about 30000 real money. Uh, but I was into a lot of different other things back then, um, not as big as, as the energy sector, but um, I did okay given the absolute fundamental shift in the market in the energy section. Um, I like to cite what happened to uh, uh, T-Bone Pickens, uh, who was a tremendous um, oil man worth, worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. When he took a, now here's a guy that knows the oil industry. <laughs> I mean, he, he made billions uh, drilling for oil. Uh, and yet apparently the horizontal drilling uh, technology, he underestimated tremendously, as certainly as I did, in terms of the effect it was going to have on oil prices. So anyway, he lost about $20 billion. Now, he didn't go without a meal because that probably left him with another 50 to 70 billion cash on hand. Uh, but at any rate, it was a lot of money. And on a smaller, much smaller scale, I was in the same position. I, I lost money on that particular sector, but I, I didn't go without a meal. Um, and one more thing um, that I don't emphasize enough, I guess, is who should be getting into this or any other kind of investment? And the answer is only people who don't have any credit card debt or high interest rate debt. Uh, because if you've got debt that you're not paying off, but instead using that money to put in the market, um, that's very expensive money. <laughs> I mean, credit cards rates average, what, about 24% interest. And I don't know of any legal way I can make 24% uh, return on investment. So uh, that's pretty much akin to uh, borrowing money and go down to the casino and and uh, put it on black or, or red and spin the wheel. No, no, no. Um Okay, um, but at any rate, I'm going to follow this up with a, a video uh, detailing my year-end calculations, which will include my uh, results on a generally accepted accounting basis uh, to show you what that's what's involved. And given the fact that I'm actually uh, my stake, my original investment, is relatively small, um, about 14000 I think. I have to go back through the records. And even given the fact that the stock I'm most heavily invested in, which is Haynes Brands International, has dropped from the high teens to $4, um, Nevertheless, I'm happy with that because, as I've also stated in, on my website, the way I can immediately tell if I'm winning or losing is look at the number of contracts that my resources will cover. 
And right now I'm around 30 contracts. Um, so I'm not taking any money off the table. If I wanted to, that the number I could cover would be reduced, of course. Um, but the number of contracts I cover will, cover will have a direct impact on what, how much my premiums are. So the whole point of the exercise is uh, cash flow. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I'm going to cut this video at this point. And if you'll subscribe and hit follow, you'll know when my next uh, be notified uh, or not follow, but notify. Uh, you'll be notified when the next video comes out, which will be mostly covering year end and tax issues. So I hope you've had good holidays and I wish us all a prosperous new year.